All right. Well, welcome, everyone. I'm sure we may still have some additional folks joining us, but for the sake of our time, want to go ahead and get started. My name is Lynn Kinst. I'm the Executive Director of the Hemophilia Council of California, and we thank you for joining us this evening for our public policy and advocacy webinar series. Um, tonight's topic is breaking the code, secrets you can uncover from your insurance card. And I'd like to thank Mike Bradley um, for joining us. Um, Mike is a past board president of HCC and a market access consultant and appreciate him taking time to help us present this information tonight. So welcome, um, Mike. I've mentioned it before, but as we go through these welcome slides, want to remind folks, um, may be helpful to you to have your insurance card handy and in front of you as you're going through this information this evening. So if you don't already have that, you might want to grab that real quick and bring it back to your phone or your computer. Um, so real briefly, before we jump into the topic, we do just want to remind folks that the the Hemophilia Council of California is here to coordinate statewide access, education, and advocacy efforts on behalf of individuals living with um, bleeding disorders and related sort of rare and chronic conditions. Um, and our real focus is access to care and um, treatment options for people living with bleeding disorders. And we really do a lot of that work across rare disease because you know, within the rare disease community, um, we're all facing similar issues as it relates to access to treatment and some of the barriers that we face. And so we like to work together with other groups towards those goals. Um, our mission, again, related is to improve access to care and treatment options in order to advance the quality of life for people with bleeding disorders through advocacy, education, and outreach in collaboration with our founding member organizations. Um, and so while it's not the direct focus of our presentation tonight, uh, we do like to remind folks that if you are having access issues, um, we may have resources that will be able to assist you. So there'll be contact information at the end and feel free to reach out to us um, directly if you're having a, a specific access problem. All right, so with that, we're going to jump into the meat of the presentation that we're going to discuss tonight. And again, I uh, wanted to encourage folks, if you didn't hear this earlier, you know, please feel free to go ahead and grab your insurance card and follow along with us um, as we take a look at some examples. Um, you know, it's interesting to think where, you know, as people think about a um, couple of things, just real basic, right? You may have more than one insurance card. So um, I'm going to kind of, you know, share some examples here, but I have my regular health insurance card and then I happen to have a different card for dental insurance, right? Um, my family has uh, our health insurance through... CalPERS, because my husband is a state employee. So we have medical, we have dental, we have vision, don't have a card for our vision insurance, but we do have a card for our health plan and for our dental. And each of us in our family has our own card. Um, but much of the information is the same on that card. The only thing that pretty much differs on our insurance cards is our medical member ID number, right? So we each have a unique member ID cup, uh, number. Um, Mike, how about you? What is, you know, do you have one card? So, one cards? I'm old, so I'm on Medicare. So I have a Medicare card. Oh, you can't really see it. So I have a Medicare card that comes from CMS, right? But I have chosen to actually go on Medicare Advantage, which is their managed care plan. And so I actually have United Healthcare. And so this is why it's really important to know where all your cards at. Because when we first, when my wife first got Medicare, she went to her doctor and then showed her the Medicare card, the one they got from CMS. Well, guess what? We got bills from them that that United Healthcare didn't pay because we actually were on the managed care plan. So if you have multiple insurance cards, really you should find out which one is primary. And if if your family, if you're if you both have insurance, you have a primary and a secondary insurance, and you really should know what who is primary, but 
bring both cards. I like Lynn also have a dental card and I also have a vision card. So those aren't traditionally considered health insurance, but they definitely are insurance cards that you need to keep with you. And just to reiterate, I know Lynn's going to go over this, take a picture of your cards front and back. And I would suggest send, send a couple to your family members just to make sure that, that someone has them because in this day and age, you're likely to have your phone more than you're going to have where you keep your insurance card. So, yeah, I was going to just go ahead for those that have access to the chat, um, throw in the chat where you keep your own insurance card, right? Like, where do you keep your insurance card? So I keep my card in my wallet, um, which I think is probably a common place to keep them. But like Mike said, I would also suggest, and this is something that we've done in our family is, and also, you know, I have children, right? And so sometimes I might be accessing healthcare for myself. Sometimes I might be helping my children access healthcare. So I have a picture of each one of our cards on my phone. Um, and I have a, an iPhone. And so my, one of my tricks is that I favorite the picture. Uh, I favorite each of those pictures. So it puts them in a separate, um, I take lots of pictures of my kids. Um, but that way I can easily find my insurance cards um, in, you know, the favorites folder of my photos. Um, so other folks may have other tricks. If you are taking a picture, I would make sure, and somebody just noted this in the chat, and this is really important, make sure you take the front and the back of the card, because as we're going to go over in a little bit, um, the back has a lot of really important information. And if you are using that photo on your phone to access your care. If you find yourself somewhere without your wallet um, or without your card, but you have that picture, the provider is probably going to need the information on the back just as much as they're going to need the information on the front of the card. So, um, and in our case, like in our family's case, like I said, the information on the back is the same on all of our cards. So I don't need four pictures of that but I have each of our fronts and then a picture of the back. Um, and I, I like Mike's suggestion as well. Um, you know, both my husband and I have that information on our phones. Um, if you're a single person, maybe there's an extended family member or a, you know, good friend that you might want to have that information just in case you're ever in a situation where you're needing to access care and, you are not in a position to be able to, you know, pull that information up. Uh, okay. So moving right along, why is this so important? Why do you need to know what is on your insurance card and, uh, you know, be familiar with that information? Well, ultimately, you're going to need your insurance card to access care, right? Um, most places are not you know, I mean, if you're in an emergency room situation, you know, they're going to see you probably regardless of all of this, but you could get stuck with a really big bill afterwards, right? Um, but when it comes to the um, most places where you access care, if you're going to your doctor's office or urgent care or needing some sort of service like a, a blood test or an x-ray or you're wanting to pick up a prescription at the pharmacy, they're going to need that insurance information before they're going to provide that treatment or that medication to you, right? And so um, you want to have that card handy so that you can provide that information. In addition, many of us are now on health plans that we traditionally would refer to as uh, managed care plans. And if you're in a plan like that, you may have a network, meaning a specific group of doctors and providers that your insurance company has negotiated special rates with. And it's going to be less expensive for you to go see those providers as opposed, as opposed to a provider that's not in your network. So the card often will have information that would be able to direct you to um, the right place to go to get treatment and not have those extra costs attached because you're out of network. And then in addition, we're also going to see that your card may also be able to tell you how much you're going to pay. So in many cases, cards will have um, information about your 
copay, your deductible, and or your out-of-pocket maximum costs. So those are things that we're going to jump into a little bit more, understanding those um, pieces of information, but all important things to help you understand kind of what is really going on with your insurance. So Yeah, and Lynn, I mean, one of the most important things, and I learned this when I changed insurances, is if you go to the pharmacy, you go to the doctor, all that information they need, like the phone number to call for claims or the pharmacy number to call to submit a claim is all on that card because I have United Healthcare, but United Healthcare probably has a hundred different plans and they probably got, you know, 20, 30 different phone numbers. So you want that phone number and that contact information that is specific to you. So I, it, it, it's just invaluable. It's, it's interesting when we, when we decided to do this webinar, I actually went and looked at my card closer than I ever did. And it's amazing the amount of information, useful information that they can put on this one card. Absolutely. Thanks, Mike. So um, what do insurance cards tell us? So we've talked about a little bit of this. Um, you know, they can be confusing, right? We don't always understand all of the terms that are used. So hopefully some of that we're going to be able to demystify, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> for you tonight. Uh, we've mentioned this, but a lot of very important information is on the back of your card. So don't forget to check both the front and the back of your card. Um, not all cards are the same, right? So uh, we're going to show you a few different examples tonight. Your card may not have all of the pieces that we are going to talk about on your personal card. Um, that's okay. Uh, we're going to try to go over as many different scenarios as possible, and you can identify which of those things are on your card. And uh, as we've said previously, you may have more than one card. Um, and we're going to talk about a few examples of that. One of the things that's just interesting, and I actually didn't notice this until I just pulled my card out for tonight's presentation, but my card has a QR code on it. So if you're familiar with QR codes, um, you know, you can hold your phone over a QR code and it'll pop up a website and it'll take you to additional information. Uh, so I haven't actually pulled up the, the web page that it's going to take me to, but it's got the uh, it's got a web address next to that QR code. So I'm assuming that it's going to take me to the website that's specific to my health plan um, if I were to go to that QR code. So that's an interesting thing that is probably more recent on some of these cards and not everyone may have it. All right, so. And, and one of the things I wanna stress, one of, sorry, Lynn, one of the things I wanna stress is make sure your, your information is updated at your insurer. You know, if, if you've moved or you've, you've got a new phone number, there's a better phone number for them because it, it's vital. I mean, you know, every now and then I'll get an, uh, like an email from United Healthcare and they say, oh, is, you know, is your contact information updated? And sometimes I say, well, you know, I don't even respond, but you know, it's always good just to check what information they have. And then if anything is wrong, it's it's fairly easy to go and update it. And it's just vital that they have the right information. That's a great point. And that's especially, I mean, that's important regardless of the kind of insurance that you have, but that is especially important if you have a plan such as under Medicare, which is from the federal government or under Medi-Cal, which is supported by the state. It's especially important because in some of those situations, you may have to do an annual renewal process. Um, if you have employer-based insurance, your employer is going to provide that information and they're probably more likely to have your correct current information. But um, you definitely want to make sure that whoever is providing your insurance has that information. So. We have a few different examples of plans. Um, most of these are the front of the card. The Western Health Advantage at the bottom is an example of a CalPERS plan. So the back of a state of California health insurance plan. Um, and we're going to go through these in a little bit more detail in a moment. But you'll see, look, there's a great variety of cards here. Um, it's very typical that in the top, uh, you know, sort of at the top uh, left-hand corner, it typically is identifying the name of the company that is providing the coverage. 
Um, you also see by, for example, in some cases, folks may have a separate prescription card. So in the middle of the screen, you see that CVS Caremark card. That's someone who has a separate card for prescriptions. So that is, um, you know, that is a possibility. Um, so let's go to the next screen. We're going to have some medical examples on this screen. And so on this one, you see, again, a couple of insurance cards that look similar to the screen before. You've got the Anthem Blue Cross, the Cal Optima, the uh, LA Care. Those are all going to be the, the, the so a lot of folks on Medi-Cal are actually on Medi-Cal managed care, meaning the state has contracted with a company uh, like Cal Optima or Anthem to provide coverage for that individual. So you're gonna have that card for example, the Anthem Blue Cross card. And then you're also going to have what we call a BIC card. So you see the Poppy card, that's the current version of a BIC card, which stands for Benefits Identification Card. And that is basically like your ID number specifically with Medi-Cal with the state. And so sometimes you're gonna need, you may need both of those cards in order to be able to access care. Um, I do think there may have been a comment or a question in the chat. So some folks have GHPP and GHPP patients, we have been told by the state are supposed to also receive a benefit information card, but they don't always receive those. And so um, I will have, Andrea, if you can pull up the information, it's the GHPP eligibility mailbox. Um, it's on their website. That is where you can email if you do not have a BIC card and you need to get that replaced as a person who has GHPP only. If you have Medi-Cal, you contact your county Medi-Cal office in order to get your card, your BIC card replaced. Um, and it does sometimes take a while. So um, I know that's not a new frustration that patients have had. But be persistent because it's good to have that card available to you. Okay. And Lynn, the a question for you. If you, so this is very similar to Medicare in a way. So if you have, can you hear me, Lynn? So if, if you have Medi-Cal, is GHPP ever in a managed care organization or is that all you always need a BIC card for GHPP? So GHPP is never in managed care per se, but a lot of people have Medi-Cal combined with GHPP. So they may have Medi-Cal in managed care plus GHPP. And okay. GHP is always your payer of last resort. So you were mentioning earlier, like you may have a primary and a secondary insurance. A patient who has Medi-Cal and GHPP, Medi-Cal is their primary and GHPP is their secondary. Um, Thanks. So, yeah. So this last example here is a Covered California card. So Covered California is our ACA entity here are America, uh, the, the, the legislation that was passed that helped facilitate um, health plans for individuals. And you see covered California logo on this particular card. So LA Care is the, um, the company that is administering this plan and covered California is the, um, you know, sort of the government oversight agency for that plan. And then you're still gonna have a card in this case. Um, good comment in the chat from Mosey. You don't necessarily have to have a BIC card in order to access GHPP benefits, particularly for our bleeding disorders patients. If you are going to a hemophilia treatment center and you are working with a specialty pharmacy that's familiar with bleeding disorders and familiar with GHPP, as long as you have your num like your patient ID number, um, they will be able to, you know, request reimbursement um, for your, you know, the treatment that they provide without that card. So good point of clarification, but it's good to go ahead and get a copy of that card because 
if you're working with a provider that's more familiar only with providing Medi-Cal services, um, it's going to help that provider to be able to, to treat you. And, you know, just to be clear, when we talk about providers in this case, we are meaning doctors, pharmacists, you know, folks that um, provide medical services. Okay, so here is kind of a busy slide, but hopefully that we, as we as we look at this for a minute, we'll see a lot of diff some of the examples of the types of information that you will find on your card. So number one, we have a member number. That's going to be specific to you. I mentioned um, just by my own example, um, my mem our member numbers are different for each one in our family. Um, it's going to have the name of the person that's being covered. Um, there's probably going to be a group number um, at, in terms of like, which is really what tells them what's specific to the plan that you're on, right? Mike mentioned, you know, you might have United Healthcare, but there's lots of different versions of United Healthcare that have different costs to them, have different benefits. Um, and so the provider needs to know what group you are in. Um, sometimes it has your doctors, your doctor on there. So your um, healthcare provider's name and potentially their phone number. My card does not have that information. It tells me what medical group I'm in because I have an HMO and I have to, uh, you know, work through a specific medical group. It doesn't have my provider's name on it. Um, and then these examples show things like how much it's going to pay, how much you're going to pay for a copay to visit your PCP. That's your primary care provider. How much you're going to, how much it's going to cost to see a specialist, the SPC. Um, how much for the, for ER and for urgent care. And then you also see the RX copays or the prescription copays. And as is very common, um, generics are cheaper than name brand or non-generic drugs. Um, and then as we've said on the back, uh, in particular, you're going to find information that you can call for help, right? So you have a number for an on-call nurse. Many health plans have like a, like a nurse line that you can call uh, if you want advice as far as like, hey, should I go to the doctor or should I go to urgent care? Um, you can often call that advice line. Member services is the number that you're going to want to use as a patient. And the number that's listed that says providers call would be what your doctor or, uh, you know, provider's office would call. And I, this is Mike. I just want to stress your card, as Len said, may not have all this information on it, right? But I'm looking at my card. My card has most of it. So we're, we're, Len's going to go into a bit more detail. But, you know, jot down if there's certain things that, that aren't on your card that you think are important to you, and then you can go back and, and find that out. Yeah, and that information, if it's not on your card, it should be available on your plan website, um, and that should be listed on, that should be listed on your card, or that member services 800 number is a number you can call to find out those additional things that maybe isn't posted on your card. So um, again, you're going to want to look, you know, the name of the insurance company. You typically have to provide that um, and the type of the plan. We've talked a little bit about HMOs. Um, PPOs is a typically are a little bit more expensive insurance coverage. But then with a PPO, you have more flexibility as far as what doctor you go to. So there's no sort of in-network and out-of-network like we were talking about earlier with a PPO. Um, again, that plan website or customer service number and the pharmacy submission information. So uh, one of the things that is commonly on these cards is that RX bin number. That's what the pharmacist use, uses. And based with that number, it's going to be able to tell them um, what kind of coverage you have for your prescriptions. Okay, and feel free again to throw questions in the chat. Um, I'm going to try to move a little bit more quickly through these slides because we have talked about some of these things. You're going to want to see the policy number. Again, sometimes you have a policy number. Sometimes they call it a group number. Um, sometimes you might have both. 
Um, in my in our in my personal case, I have a member number, which is the individual to the person, and then a group number. We talked about the RX bin code. And then um, sometimes it might be an RX group code instead. So that's a similar thing. And then here's one, an important one, your, um, your effective date and your expiration date. So if that isn't on the card, that is something that you're definitely going to want to be aware of, right? When was your plan? Go when did your plan go into effect? And when does it expire? Um, my cards actually don't have that on it, but the way that that CalPERS plans are set up, they're always on the calendar year. So it starts January 1 and it ends December 31st, unless you were to you know, leave employment prior to that. Um, so that's definitely something that you're going to want to know, though. When is your plan effective? If you have Medi-Cal or GHPP, you will have an annual renewed, renewal date. And those ones vary across the uh, the year, right? Sometimes they're aligned with your birth date, um, but that's something that you're going to want to be aware of because you're probably going to need to submit paperwork to renew in advance of that renewal date. So anyone in the chat would be interested. I don't have the effective date and expiration date on my card either. It just says plan year. I'd be interested, anyone on the chat, does anyone have that information on the cards that they're looking at? Feel free to pop that in there or raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll kind of keep going. And then I want to comment briefly on this because as far as helping to understand insurance, co-payments, deductibles, all of those things we touched on briefly. And this card that we're looking at on this slide is kind of a good example of that. So in this card really breaks down what the co-pays are. Um, and, you know, it's more expensive if you're going to a specialist than it is if you're going to your primary care doctor. Uh, the ER is more expensive than urgent care. Um, and then there's different tiers of, of payment for prescriptions, right? It's like some are $8, some are $35, some are $50. Um, and, and then there's certain types of preventative care that have no copay. And more and more insurance companies have gone to that because they want to encourage people to access that preventative care that is really better for our health and is usually ends up being cheaper, right? If we can spend money on preventative care, uh, it avoids more, you know, catastrophic and more costly types of healthcare interventions or treatments. Okay, and then I think this might be the last one as far as the card views. Again, really kind of focusing in on the back. That's typically where you're going to get those phone numbers, websites, um, and some of that information um, that is where you can go for more help, right? So again, if, if some of these things are not on there, um, and, you know, that's... that's um, you know, a good thought. So let's pop over here. Mike, anything you want to interject? I I, I do. Someone said the comment says mine is Kaiser. Very little info in the card. So that that's interesting because you know Kaiser is kind of a different type of an HMO, but it's interesting that they don't have as much information on it. I know we don't have time to dive into it, but Lynn, that might be an interesting thing for us to reach out to this person to see what information is actually on it. Yeah, and I do think one thing that's interesting about that comment, I don't have Kaiser personally, but my in-laws have Kaiser. Um, and so I've you know helped them with some medical issues and Kaiser has a very robust online patient porthole portal where you have, where and I, and I think there's even an app that you can do that information with where there's lots of information and a lot of a lot of companies and doctors offices and plans have gone to that so you know originally at one point the card was maybe kind of all we got um, now we do have, you know, and Kaiser is kind of the provider and the health plan all kind of rolled into one in a certain way. And so you may be able to access a lot of that information through your Kaiser portal account, um, as opposed to, you know, having to look at the card. Um, yeah. 
So real quick, uh, we do have some resources. Uh, these are hyperlinks, which I know obviously you can't see the background information um, on the slides, but once we post them, the links will be available. And these are examples of where you can go to get more information about what your card should have on it, what you can learn from your card. Um, this St. Jude Health Insurance resource uh, is one that I came across when I was looking up information, and it's a really great website. And uh, again, the link will be available when we post the slides, but also you could probably just Google St. Jude's Health Insurance, and I'm sure it would pop up. And there was a lot of really great information on that website about how to kind of understand your health insurance and your coverage. So uh, we're running out of time here, but feel free if you have any questions, please raise your hand or pop them in the chat. We can stay on for a few more minutes. I'm just going to kind of pop through a couple of informational items. So this is kind of the kickoff of a series that we're going to be doing over the next few months on insurance and really trying to help people understand their own plans better. So in September, in a few weeks, we're going to be talking about just my type choosing the right insurance for you. Um, many of us in the fall of the year have open enrollment periods, time where we can pick our insurance. Uh, there's deadlines related to Medicare and choosing insurance this time of year going into um, kind of the end of the year so that we will be discussing how to examine those insurance options. In October, we're going to talk about young adults and the various transitions that take place in your 20s as you um, kind of maybe have to transition off your parents' insurance uh, or you transition off of possibly CCS, California Children's Services, to GHPP, which is the state program for adults. So we're going to take a closer look at that. Um, so we don't encourage you to either if you are a young adult. Lynn, can you say that again? Because you, you, Lynn, can you say that again? You, yeah. you kind of cut out on that, the, the one about the young adults. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, so we're going to talk about, you know, transitions in your 20s, right? So that's a time where you may have to roll off your parents' insurance or transition between CCS, which is California Children's Services, to the state adult program, GHPP, if you qualify for that. So um, we're really going to dive into, you know, what some of those decisions are in your 20s. And then finally, in November, we're going to focus on, you know, insurance options for adults who are getting support through some of our state or federal programs like Medi-Cal, GHPP, and Medicare. So those are our upcoming presentations. Um, again, we want to thank our sponsors and thank Mike for joining us tonight. And um, I will leave the screen here if anyone has any questions. Uh, or comments that they want to add, we would, um, you know, love to connect with you. And and we did get some more information on the Kaiser card information. So thank you very much for that. Lynn, excellent job. This was a really interesting webinar because, you know, we all have our insurance cards and I've had insurance cards for what, 40, 50 years or whatever. I didn't really look at them as in depth as I did until even Lynn was talking now. And, you know, some of the stuff, you know, is just for the pharmacy or whatever, but it's, it's amazing the amount of information they could put on this card. And Lynn, it was very insightful about the websites and stuff. Cause I know I do a lot of stuff with John Muir cause I live out in Contra Costa and I do a lot of stuff through the web, through the, the app. Right. And so but you still, totally the first safe. thing you do when you walk into your doctor's office, for whatever reason, they want to take a copy of your card. So it's mm -hmm. important to have all that stuff. So yeah, I again. just there was a question in the chat. Is I don't know if Bile is still on, um, asking for information about the youth insurance. I'm assuming you're asking about California. We referenced California Children's Services. Um, so if that's the case, we do, we should have your email from your registration. Uh, we can try to send you, um, some information on, um, CCS. And then if you have follow-up questions, happy to, to, to engage in a follow-up conversation with you. All right. I don't see any, anything in the chat. So Great. Thank feel you free all. as always. Contact Lynn. <laughs> she's, a, <laughs> she's a wealth of knowledge. 
Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. Good night, Heidi. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> yeah, nice hearing your voice. Ditto.